afternoon. <clears throat> um, and I wanted to apologize for not being there today, but I just wanted to make sure that I was able to go over um, a couple of these questions with you um, so that you understood how to do um, these gradient questions. And so I'm going to go through a couple of them today um, for you so that you can watch this video later and are able to um, kind of get a better understanding of these. <clears throat> if you look, um, I have a simple map here. Um, it has, you know, a topographic map. We have the Excelsior River here, and that's actually what we're going to be finding the gradient of here. So it says, what is the gradient of the entire length of Excelsior River? And so I need to find out, first of all, there's a couple things I need to find out. Gradient, right? Gradient equals change in field value. I'm going to use my triangle. Change in field value, right, which is the difference in elevation divided by the distance that it covers. So that's my formula. If you look up in the reference tables, it says it, and it's, it's written out um, a little bit differently, but you also need the units for those. So first thing I want to do is I'm going to look and see that um, my map is in miles, and it appears that, um, you know, it appears that they, they're going to do feet here. Um, you know, looking at this diagram and looking at the answers, I can see that it's probably going to be in feet, even though it doesn't give me that in a key. It should, <clears throat> but it doesn't. So anyway, so I need to find, it says, what is the gradient of the entire length of Excelsior River? And um, so I, and I, it's a multiple choice, so I'm, I'm going to be pretty close, you know, as far as that goes. So the first thing I need to do is I need to find the length of this river um, and the, the difference between the highest point and the lowest point. And if you notice, they have this little tail up here. Sometimes they include that in the question, sometimes they don't. But if we're close with a multiple choice question, it should be pretty simple. So we have 0 and 200. So the first thing I'm going to write down here is the difference between the two is 200 minus 0. Right, so that's the first part. And then I'm going to find my distance. And the way I'm going to do it is I'm going to use a little card here. You can use a pencil or pretty much anything you have available to you. Um, and then I kind of spin this around so that I get an accurate or pretty close to an accurate measurement of this. And I mark each spot where it crosses. And then this is pretty, this is straight enough here, so I'm going to draw that out. So this is the length from here to here is the length of, of that uh, river or stream. <clears throat> So I'm going to mark here, I have my first point, and that is going to be 10 miles. And then if you look here, I have a distance of 8, so that's about 18. So 8, and this is 10, so I have about 18 miles of distance. And so let's look at that. I have um, 18 down here, so this is going to be... 200 divided by 18, and then I'm going to bring out my calculator, which is on my phone, and I'm going to divide 200 by 18. And if you look, right, this is what I get, 200 divided by 18, and I get 11.1, .1, and we have an answer down here that is 11 feet per mile. So this is going to be 11.1, .1, and that's feet per mile, and that completes that question. All right, so that's the first one. All right, so number two, oh, that's on the back. So number two, right, I have a map here, um, topographic map. You have a couple creeks, and I have a couple profile lines and a couple other things. So it says, what is the approximate gradient along BD? So we have a line BD. Right, so I'm going to take my formula, I'm going to write it over here. Gradient equals change in field value divided by my distance that it covers. And I'm going to work down so you can see. So I have gradient equals my change in field value. I have 100 and I have 50. So it's 100 minus 50. And then I have to find out my distance, and this is a little bit easier one. Pretty straight line. And I mark my two spots, so I have B and D, and that's going to be approximately two miles, or two kilometers, sorry, kilometers, make sure I have the right things, and this is in 10 meters, so it's meters, 
And so now I do my calculations. I get 100 minus 50, which is 50, and that's meters. And I have two kilometers. And so solving the equation, I get 25, and it's meters, right? Meters per kilometer. So it's 50 divided by 2, which is 25. And then I have meters per kilometers left over. And so that's the answer to number two. So on number three, again, I have a topographic map. Let me, I'm going to blow this up a little bit because I think maybe struggling to see. Um, you can follow along, though, on the one on the, that you have on the computer, too. So. All right, so here we have a bunch of different things here going on. It's, again, it's a topographic map. If you notice, the ocean is over here, so our bottom level is going to be zero. Um, our contour interval is 10 meters, and here's our scale. It's in kilometers, so we have meters per kilometers when we're doing our gradient. So calculate gradient between B and C. So B and C, notice there's no line, but that's fine. We don't need a line. Um, and so let's go down here, and I'm going to write my formula down. Gradient equals change in field value divided by distance. So gradient equals my change of field value. So I have 10 meters, so it's 10. And it looks like C is on that index contour, right, the darker line, which is 50. So I have 50 minus 10. And you can write that either way. I just write it that way because it's easier. And then I'm going to divide that by my distance. So I need my distance here. So I'm going to use my same card. And it right here to right here. And that is 2. So it's this is meters and this is 2 kilometers. And so I'm going to slide over here. So G equals 40 meters divided by two kilometers and then g will equal 20 meters per kilometers now notice this is not a multiple choice so this is a little bit harder because you actually have to come up with the answer make sure that you are putting your units with your answer um, if it's not a multiple choice um, otherwise it's wrong you have to have remember it's a number and a unit that goes with it and in this case our units are meters per kilometer so make sure you have that all right, so let's go to number four. And again, we have a topographic map. Notice it's not a multiple choice again, right? And they are looking to calculate the gradient of Mud Creek between points C and D. Label your answer to the correct unit. So we're going from C to D. And I'm going to... Let's do it over here. And again, my gradient equals change in field value divided by distance. So G equals my change in field value. It uh, looks like this is an ocean, so it's an island. And 20 foot intervals, so we're in feet. So in this case, we have 100. And we're going down 20, so it's 80, 60, 40. So that's 20, or even if you go up, it's 20. So we have 80. Oh, no, sorry. That's 100. 100 minus 20 divided by my distance, which I'm going to figure out. My distance between C and D. And that is going to be 4. And that is in miles. And that's in feet. So G equals, and that's 80 divided by 4. So that's, again, feet per mile. And then G equals 4 into 80 is 20. So it's 20 feet per mile. All right.
All right, so let's do, the last one I'm going to do um, is number five, and I'm going to let you work on the rest of them by yourself. Let me back this up a little bit. And it says the diagram below represents a temperature field in degrees Celsius. And it says the approximate temperature gradient, or what is the approximate ten temperature gradient from points X to points Y? So from here to here. All right, so we have, this is in meters. So our our um, units are going to be Celsius per meter. So let's do it. Gradient equals change in field value divided by distance. So gradient equals my change in field value from X to Y. And I got to figure out my temperature gradient or my contour interval here. Or my, these would be isotherm. So my isotherm interval. So this is two, that's 22 and this is 28, sorry about that. So 28 degrees minus 22 degrees. And it's going to be a distance of, let's figure this out. I'm gonna use one of my old marks. And it's a distance of 30. All right, so it's 30 and we're in meters. This is degrees Celsius. So G equals my change in field value. So 28 to 22, that's six degrees Celsius and divided by 30 meters. And G is going to equal, and I'm bringing over my handy dandy calculator, even though I probably could get this. And I'm going to do six divided by 30. And I get 0.2. Okay, 0.2. Got to make sure you divide it right, top by the bottom. So it's 0.2, and that's degrees Celsius per meter. All right, so that's it. So the rest of them, you've got what seven, eight, nine. So you only have three left. Um, so you should be able to figure those out. Um, if you struggle with those, let me know. Um, email me. Um, when you hand them in, I can take a look at them. Uh, to make sure you've done them right and uh, we can go from there so again right this is the way you do that uh, i know it's a little bit harder on uh you know on the computer screen but you can use a pencil or you can use a piece of paper um, of some sort if you have a piece of paper it doesn't matter what kind of paper it is um, you just need a spot to mark the distances so that's how you calculate gradient those are four good examples um, remember you're going to have the test on let's see you'll have the test on thursday um, so keep that in mind and it's going to be 20 questions. Most of it's multiple choice. There's only a couple short answer, maybe three. Um, and so that should be, you know, a little beneficial. And again, it's on field maps, uh, and ISO line sections, and then the spheres of the earth. So keep in mind, um, those are the things that you need to know. So good luck. And if you have any questions about what we're doing or what we, you know, what you need to do for the test, uh, again, email me and we can go through those. All right, thank you very much, and uh, have a good day again. Sorry I couldn't be there today.